Hello and welcome to another episode of Making Stuff Look Good in Unity. In this video, we'll be examining the effects of Hearthstone's golden cards, and writing a shader that could be used to recreate the look of nearly every golden card in the game. First, how about a quick look at the end result? Okay, so this obviously isn't a real card in Hearthstone, but looks-wise, it fits in quite nicely. The card art was done by Jeremy Chong, and you can check out more of his amazing illustrations, linked in the description. So what has gone into this shader to transform a still illustration into an animated golden card portrait? I'll tell you right now that it is not a golden tracer card shader, but rather a more generic setup driven by various texture and vector inputs. A more generalized setup is essential for creating over a thousand golden card variants as Hearthstone features. Let's take a quick look at a handful of golden cards and try to pull out key effects we want our shader to cover. Here's Timberwolf. It's a good example of a golden card as it features many of the staple effects. There are wavy distortions in the wolf's fur and on the grass. This is really just the base illustration with distortions applied to it using a mask to make some areas wavy and others static. Next we've got the grass and specks scrolling from the left to the right. A couple of things to note with them. They are not affected by the distortion mentioned before. This maintains our suspicion that the distortions are done on the base layer, and the effect layers are blended on top. But then there's another trick here. Notice how some of the grass passes under the wolf's front paw, while the majority is passing over the rest of its body. It's unlikely that the foot has been cut out from the background only to then be layered over top, because that would be both time consuming and wasteful of texture memory. Instead, I suspect that this faux background to foreground effect is taking advantage of the base illustration's unused alpha channel. The red, green, and blue channels of the wolf all encode the colors as we'd expect, but the alpha channel can be used for whatever we want because we're not actually using it for alpha blending, so we can create a grayscale image that defines what is considered the background in white and what is considered the foreground in black, and store this in the alpha channel. Then when the grass is being rendered on top, we can mask out the foreground by simply multiplying by the alpha value of the base illustration. Finally, we've got the swoosh of wind coming around from the bottom right and wrapping around to the left. This effect differs from the grass and debris in two ways. Its motion isn't just a simple scrolling x-coordinate, it appears to curve a bit, so how might we account for that? Picture a texture that is tileable on at least the top and bottom, such that we can scroll its y uv coordinate all we want. Now take this funky texture. The green value increases as we snake through the texture. The red value is 1 on one side of the line, even around the bends, and 0 on the other side. If we were to use this weird red and green snake as the UV coordinates of our tileable texture, it would look something like this. And then if we scroll the Y coordinate simply by tying its value to the uniform underscore time dot X, we'd get motion that curves and bends. The motion texture will leave an unused blue and alpha channel. We can use either one as another channel for masking pixels if we need to though. The other way the wind effect layer differs from the grass is that its opacity seems to pulse. For many effects, it'll probably be helpful to expose a color with which we can tint the effect layer. Now I'm not particularly keen on this part of the solution, but we can use Unity's animation system to animate that color property, giving us varying opacity over time. So let's recap what we've learned about the golden card shader from the Timberwolf. 1. There is a base layer that uses masked UV distortions. 2. There are several effect layers blended on top of the potentially distorted base. 3. Effect layers can be set in the foreground or a faux background by multiplying out the base layer's alpha channel. Four. Effect layers can have motion defined by a red and green motion texture. 5. With an exposed color property, we can animate the color and opacity of the effect layers over time. That covers almost everything a golden card can do, but let's check out another card to see some things we've missed. Healing Touch gives us a couple hints about other things our shader still needs to be able to handle, namely the ability to scale and rotate an effect layer. Ideally, we want to perform our transformation on the UV coordinates such that the rotation comes out squished, similar to the effect you get when you scale an object's parent and then manipulate the local rotation of the child. I'll be honest, the transformation code in my shader is probably the ugliest part. It'd be a lot nicer to actually create a transformation matrix outside of the shader, pass it in, and then have one nice multiplication on the UV coordinate. Feel free to take my code and do just that with it. Healing Touch also reinforces that there might be more masking at play than just the base texture's alpha, because sections of the bottom ring pass in front of the character, in the same area parts of the top ring pass behind the character, so using the motion texture's alpha channel for additional per layer masking is probably a good idea. We'll add those new requirements to our list and get to work on the shader that will handle all of them. We'll start with the properties. Aside from the base texture and its distortion and masking, we've got a lot of properties to control each effect layer. These properties are repeated three more times with unique names to give us four potential layers of effects. 
We're not going to use every single effect for every single golden card though. We saw that Timberwolf used just two layers, but Healing Touch potentially used three. So we'll use Pragma Shader feature to generate versions of the shader that optionally leave out computations. We'll have to write a custom material editor that sets these shader feature keywords, but the upside to all of this is that shaders won't waste time on unused effect layers. We could also use the multi-compile keyword, but that would end up generating a bunch of versions of the shader that we would never actually use, like one where only effect layer 3 is enabled. Shader feature would allow for that, but it would cut down the build size a bit if none of the materials use the shader in that way. Because I had to write a material editor to include the keywords, I also included some additional formatting that hides properties we're currently not using, and generally makes things a bit more compact. It also lets me hide the fact that I'm packing a pair of 2D vectors into a single 4D vector property. Back in our shader, the vertex program does its usual vertex transformation and passing along of the texture UVs, and then, for each effect layer, it calculates that ugly transformation I mentioned before. The ugly transformation is applied to a unique text chord, one for each effect layer. Onto our fragment program, we start off with some distortion in the base layer. I've covered this in several of my other videos, so I won't get into it here. We'll grab the alpha channel of the distorted base layer to use as a background mask for effects that aren't intended to be in the foreground. Now we apply each effect layer. Note the compile directives around each block of the layer code. This is what lets the shader compiler optionally exclude parts of the code. We start by sampling the motion texture. Then, if this layer's motion speed is non-zero, we scroll the y-coordinate of the motion texture as mentioned with the Timberwolf's wind effect. When motion speed is zero, we'll actually ignore the red and green values of the motion texture and use the transform UV coordinate as is. This is the case for healing touches leafy rings. We then sample the effect texture, which will be some sort of tileable pattern for motion-based effects, or some sort of sprite for non-motion-based effects. Then we multiply that by the color value for the layer to give us tinting and variable opacity. Finally, we add this to the base, accounting for the effect texture's alpha value, and by the background versus foreground value. Rinse and repeat that three more times for each effect we stack on top. Now let's try some recreations of the two golden cards we examined using our shader. The Timberwolf's hair and the grass are ruffled by the distortion field, and masked by a grayscale texture. The grass and debris particles are scrolled from the left to the right using a motion texture and speed. They don't pass in front of the wolf's paw because they are not marked as being in the foreground. The wind whips around from the bottom right corner using a curvier motion texture and a higher motion speed. An animator is used to fade in and out the material's effect layer 2 color every few seconds. Et voila, the Timberwolf's golden animation. And it's pretty dang close to how it looks in-game. Now on to Healing Touch. A wavy motion texture is used to scroll the shining light texture down on the torrent. Two effect layers have a green leafy ring that has been squished and positioned and given some rotation over time. The rings use motion texture's alpha value to mask out the areas where they pass behind the torrent. Finally, everything has its alpha value animated to pulse on and off over time like the card does. The shader is by no means perfect. Looking back on it, there are a lot of alpha channels and values being accounted for and some of them are redundant. In terms of performance, we want to cram as much information into as few textures as possible, and I can already see ways to squeeze out a bit more from this, and eliminate some of the values. I'll probably do a proper release in the future when I'm satisfied with the shader and its material editor. Until then, I'll include a link in the description to the current version and its janky editor. The included package contains no official Hearthstone assets or the awesome Tracer fan art because I of course don't have the rights to distribute those but I can leave in all the textures I made for the sample cards slapped onto the materials that have everything except for the original card art. Well that does it for this video. I encourage you to dig through the shader code and maybe try recreating the animations for some of your favorite cards. Special thanks to all my supporters on Patreon. You the best. And as always, thank you all for watching. Keep on making those video games.